blue skies over Hull and some bright news for the sport with the return of Greyhound Racing to the city this week. The track at the Boulevard, the original home of Hull Rugby Football Club, closed last summer and was in disrepair until two businessmen, David Marshall and Sean Rennison, stepped in to get the dog back on track and they raced for the first time this Thursday. What's been the biggest problem in getting its development up and running? Time, time constraints. Um, getting, the, getting the NGRC to understand who we were as people um, involved going down to meet with uh, the, the senior executives at the NGRC in London. Um, and we felt very comfortable and confident when we'd seen them um, that we recognised the fact that we um, had set out our stall to, uh, to deliver a, a high quality operation in Hull. Much has already been done at Hull, but management this week faced a race against time to complete the main restaurant area and kitchen. The track and kennels came first, and now it's top-notch facilities that Hull is putting the finishing touches to. Now give us some statistics. How many people can you seat in your two restaurants in total? Uh, in total, upstairs 270. And we've also developed, at the other end of the, of the grandstand, a bistro on the ground floor, uh, which will seat 76. Now, bistro sounds quite plush. Uh, you can still get your pie and chips? You can still get pie and chips. Um, you, can, you can get a steak, you can get fish and chips. We are in Hull, after all. Um, so it'll be, but it'll be very good quality food prepared from fresh ingredients. The downstairs bar area is clearly taking shape, but as with any major work, there have been problems along the way. Yeah, lots of problems, as you would expect, with a, a major refurbishment of this nature. Um, and the little voice that sits on Dave Marshall's shoulder and say, don't do it, don't do it. Um, but he's, he's been confident and very firm about what he wants from the stadium. Um, the key for him has been to, to introduce, reintroduce Greyhound Racing into Hull at the highest standard. Uh, and he wanted the public areas to reflect that as well. Most tracks these days seem to think it is the restaurant and, and the a la carte food that brings in their money. Is that where you're aiming? Um, again, you know, we, you know we, we have a restaurant in the area. We do know the, um, you know the clientele. And yes, you have to put a, you know, a good menu together and you have to attract the right amount of people with the right amount of money. We accept that. But you know, I'll say again that what we need to do is we need to get the public back. We need to get the support of the ground fraternity we need to put the level of the dogs, um, to bring that level up to, um, to, to, to bring better dogs to the, to the stadium. We do that via the sponsorship, by the open racing, and, you know, the, and, and the integrity of the track is more important. You've only got a three-year lease on the place. Is that long enough to be able to judge how you're doing? <laughs> um, well, you know, we've do, hopefully um, Sean and I have done our maths correctly and we think that um, the investment that we've put in you know we'll, we'll, we'll have a return on that investment. I'm really hoping that um, you know when the council see and the support that we're getting I'm really hoping that um, you know we'll have that extended. If we're here in 10 years time would it still be racing? Definitely, definitely yes yeah without any shadow of a doubt there's plenty of people to take it on if you know I have a, a long line of family. <laughs> One man with a huge amount of experience in the sport is racing manager Mick Smith, Hull being the latest in a long line of tracks he's worked at. Hackney, Catford, Nottingham, stints at Wimbledon, Romford, it goes on, Bellevue, Coventry, but mainly Wembley, I was there for six years. And how long have you been here at Hull? Here now, just seven weeks, seven weeks, started beginning of September. Your first impressions? First impressions, it was really run down. I thought, well, I had a good look round, but talking to the two guys here, very enthusiastic. They, they sold it to me. The potential I could see, the, the work was already started. So I looked at it and thought, yeah, I, I, I could, uh, I'd enjoy working here. Now, what about your racing schedule? When, you, when are you going to run? We're going to start the first, the first meeting, Thursday next week, 25th, then Saturdays and that, that'll be throughout the rest of the year, Thursday and Saturday. Ten races, first race 7.30. So a little bit back to the old days. It is, I remember the old days, two meetings a week, eight races, yeah, but now time's moved on and now you're having tracks racing five times a week. This is a luxury to begin with, but the work is endless. There's a lot of uh, work to be done, the registrations. It's not just about grading cards. 
There's, uh, t there's just a lot more to do in the racing office. As we've seen, race cars will be well looked after, but so too, of course, will be the dogs. And a new kennel block houses 90-plus greyhounds and has been well received by trainers who've trialled dogs there. We've seen massive changes um, with the, the new kennel block and uh, all the input that the, uh, the new general manager's put in here. Put an awful lot of, uh, of effort and money into uh, reviving something that was really a Dickensian uh, stadium that was just falling, to, falling apart. There's always been a lot of negative news about how Greyhounds. Do you think this time it truly is a positive? Well, let's hope it is. Um, we've really been wanting it, really. Um, there used to be 600 to 1,000 people used to come ground racing in, in Hull um, when the old track was down Holness Road. Um, and we just need those people back. Claudia Ray's name is well known on the open race circuit after the success of Ben's Court. So, Claudia, positive about the future of Holland? Yeah, now they've got all the lease sorted, it's going to be good. It's going to be, there's good facilities, you get the free meal when you come, you get free entry and it's going to be good. Get a lot of people in, hopefully, with all, all the new facilities in. They've and special facilities just for trainers? Yes, yeah, special facilities for the trainers. My mum's excited about that coming in. It'll be just a trainers bar and earners. I think earners are allowed in as well, which will be nice without everyone else in there. Do you think there'll be a lot of uh, racing folk in the Hull area to come? I think a lot of people will come back that used to come, which will be good. A lot of old faces will return. They haven't been for quite a few years for numerous reasons, which will be nice and get, get back to how it used to be with everyone here. Let's look ahead two or three years, Mick. You're still here, comfortably behind your desk. How do you think the racing is to develop at Hull? Well, in two years, I'd like to think we've, we'll be established with two or three annual events attracting the top trainers throughout the country and at the bigger picture if we uh, keep a tight ship here I'd like to think uh, we can apply for bags and um, maybe introduce bags racing. Ambitious plans for Hull can only be good news and the return of racing two nights a week is almost upon them. Such has been the feedback, this restaurant will be full on Thursday and it's hoped everything else will be ready for the grand open race gala which sees Hull return to the fold. Now you're opening on Thursday, do you think you'll be ready? Absolutely, no, no fear of that whatsoever and I say that with a degree of confidence. But your other restaurant looks far from ready. It's just tables and chairs. You have to set the date, the date is next Thursday. I've got a team of men that have worked for me for a lot of years and if they have to sleep here, it'll be open on Thursday, including myself. 